architect at Red Hat. Hello, happy to see you. Hi, hello. Nice to you. Had a few connectivity issues uh, half an hour ago. Uh, so let's start. Can you share your screen? Yes. yes. So now Laurent will explain us how to actually use the Async API. Uh, yeah. yeah. We see OK, you. can you see my screen? Yeah. Everything is OK. The stage is yours. OK, let's go. So uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to this session on uh, how to speed up your Apache Kafka API delivery. And we are going to use a Sync API and Microx for that. So I'm very happy to be with you on the biggest API days event of the season, especially because I'm in a very good company with France session that just ended and, and keen ones just, uh, just after me. But uh, first thing first, let's uh, introduce myself. So my name is Laurent Boudou. I am wearing many hats. On daytime, I am wearing a red one here. Uh, being a solution architect at Red Hat working on uh, cloud native technologies. And at night, I'm putting on my open source contributor suit. And that's why I'm here today talking with you. Uh, full disclosure, I'm the initiator of the Microx project. All the time, I'm a happy dad of five, but always having a thread or thinking about distributed things. So API specifications, Kubernetes and uh, enterprise integration patterns are my, my favorite topics. Okay, so apart from the session title, what are we going to talk about in this session? Uh, what, why this topic may be of, uh, of importance? And I was quite happy to find the, this image a few days ago, as I think it perfectly translates what we are living today. We are going back to the basics and finally understand the importance of message-based or even based interactions. Indeed, messages are everywhere and now the foundations are even driven API, but why do we need them and what may be the, the issues dealing with them? You already know it, we are living in an in interconnected world with a, a huge number of device or applications talking to each other. Would it be smartphones, uh, connected cars, watches, IoT devices, laptops, and so on. And that is pure distributed system architecture. And API were crucial to provide a loose coupling and allow different release life cycle for all these systems. But the, the arrows you see on the drawing are, are not just arrows. They represent a network, latency, security boundaries, and we know that this implies many federal reasons sometimes. And one thing that is pretty bad if we rely only on traditional request response blocking API call is that we start introducing a, an uptime coupling we do not have at build time. So REST API only will not allow us to scale to even more complex distributed interactions. And that's why we have to, to consider to, and to adopt messaging. The huge benefits of messaging and even driven approach are about uh, adding more resilience uh, in case of failure, having the ability to, to retry transmissions, also allowing um, some non-blocking request response exchanges with um, optimized uh, resources consumption. And finally, enhancing the, the scalability while allowing elasticity. Uh, you can add more event consumers where number of events is growing, and you can remove consumers and consume less resources when number of events is decreasing. So really, true, uh, truly elasticity. And one final note about uh, messaging and event based approaches is that they, they open up the doors to, to high volume of data transmission using uh, message streaming and real time propagation through publish subscribe patterns. And we know that data is in motion. It does not stay at rest in, in silos. It needs to be transferred for contextualized processing and analytics. 
So the, the rise of event-driven approaches and the need to pay a, a particular attention to the definition and the governance of these new interactions through an API approach, uh, they are crucial. And on the technical and the, the protocol side of things, uh, I would say that things are, are becoming easy because we've got Apache Kafka that can be now considered as the de facto standard. Of course, there's also a lot of MQTT, AMQP usages for industry, financial services, and IoT. But uh, Kafka is now deployed in more than 80% of uh, Fortune 100. And it becomes uh, the by default choice when it comes to, to building a cloud native application, when it comes to dealing with uh, microservices orchestration or modernization of existing applications. So it's, it may seem easy. Uh, Kafka will solve all my problems. But indeed, uh, the people are still facing the, the same issues they are having with a uh, REST API. They're, they're wondering uh, how to, to document these new endpoints that are now proliferating. Uh, what is their goal? How can they be used? How uh, to specify the format of exchange that are we, we've talked of cloud events versus a sync API previously? How can we validate it? And this leads to a lot of misunderstanding. And moreover, people are asking um, how to easily offer the access to the infrastructure. We know that deploying a, a Kafka broker is not as easy as deploying a, an HTTP stack with your app. There's also the, the problem of when did we all have all these events available? Do we have to wait for uh, the IoT device to send them? Do we have to, to plug into existing system to do CRM to, to catch them? And finally, with many publishers that may contribute publishing events, how do we ensure they are not sending garbage? How do we automate the, um, the necessary compliance checks? All these questions they usually have pro responses that bring uh, a slow time to market and poor quality and indeed a uh, lack of agility. The main change with event-driven API adoption, uh, it's also true with the, the REST API, but particularly with events ones, the main challenge can be summed up that way, how to avoid strong build time coupling. Where events should allow us to have a loosely coupled uptime with the architecture, we certainly do not want to have a strong coupling during development and very long project planning. So how to address this and speed up the delivery? That is the, the real question. And of course, obviously we've got ideas for that. It's much more than ideas. It starts with the async API specification that allows us to apply contract first approach. And this approach is really instrumental to, to ease uh to easily share knowledge and avoid a misunderstanding on how an api is supposed to work for those who missed from mendes a sync api uh, session sorry a sync api is a, an open source initiative uh, whose goal is to improve the design and the specification process in the event driven architecture area by defining contracts it's made to describe event driven api that may be using uh, different messaging protocols like uh, Kafka or MQTT. And indeed, it has a, an abstract part that is generic, whatever the protocol. And it can also include some specific binding uh, parts uh, for uh, detailing uh, protocol steps, such as destination names, uh, quality of services level, and so on. So, it can be seen as a sister spec of the, of the open API. It's very similar. It may also uh, reuse JSON schema to specify the abstract part that is related to, to data. And the very nice thing about Sync API is that it allows definition of examples. And that is 
one of the parts we can heavily rely on to really make a contract helpful in the real life. A specification with our tooling would be useless. And that's where Microx comes to the rescue. Uh, Microx is a project I started some years ago and that reached the 1.0 release last summer. It aims at providing an open source and Kubernetes based tooling for API mocking and testing. We, with Microx, we, we mostly target organizations that are trying to scale their API adoption. These orgs are usually facing issues about development team synchronization where API consumers have to wait for providers to be to be released before actually starting coding. And they're also facing issues regarding contract testing, regarding semantic versioning uh, compliance and so on. The big differentiator in Microx is that it is doing this for all your APIs, event-driven, REST, REST APIs, or legacy uh, SOAP web services also. And guess what? Microx support for async API was added this summer as we released the, the 1.0 version. And it makes it the, the first tool for mocking, simulating, and testing event-driven API. We started with the, the Kafka support, but we plan to add some of our protocols very soon. Before having a, a quick demonstration on how to use them together, let detail on two major use cases of, of Microx. So to better illustrate this, um, the first use case of Microx is about simulation or mocking. It is able to integrate with your sources of truth for API contracts and assets. So these contracts may be in a, in a Git repository typically, and Microx is able to, to connect, to discover, and then to generate live endpoints in seconds. The API consumers can then start playing with the API as it was already developed, even if you do not have written a single line of code. Microx can use different assets as the as a source, like a sync API and open API spec, of course, but also uh, Postman collections. SOAP UI or Epicurio projects. The second use case is about ensuring compliance of API implementations. Once your team has started development, you can plug Microx within your favorite CI CD pipeline runner so that at each and every commit, you can check if changes are breaking compliance on the current API version or on older ones, for example. Okay? So let's see how things are going on a, on a quick demo. Time is running, so I only show here the, the first use case about transforming your async API specification into a live Kafka endpoint with ready to use event. Let's go. So we started here on the async API playground as a friend mentioned it previously. So this is an online tool that allows us to define our async API uh, specification. We can define general information like title, like a version. We can define information on channels, topics, destinations, and so on. And using a sync API, uh, we can also define uh, schemas for- Can you zoom in a little bit so uh, everyone can see? Yes. Yes, yeah. sorry, just uh, I have recorded that. So right oh, now, okay. it's, not, it's not possible to zoom in. Sorry for that. We'll try to make it bigger uh, next time. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, sorry. The nice thing about um, a sync API, so you can specify data, but you can also attach to your specification um, uh, some examples. Here, for here, I have attached two examples that allows to illustrate with real life messages how the API is supposed to work when it will be ready. Okay, so it's really convenient to uh, illustrate the, um, the expected behavior of the API. And we can see that within this example, we use some specific 
template notations. You, you, we will see later the, the purpose of that. Okay, so once I'm happy with my specification, I can use the, the playground to um, download everything as a YAML file, put this into a Git repository, for example. It's really, it's really easy. I have already done that right now. So let's now switch to the next step, that is how to use that using Microx. So I can connect to the, the Microx console. Here I have the, the dashboard. So I can see that I have loaded one API in my repository. The uh, Microx repository helps you uh, to reference all your different API and versions and give you some insights on uh, operations that are within your, your uh, API definition. So I've got this REST API and I'm going to import my new async API in uh, Microx. I can do that with two, two ways. The first way is about connecting Microx to my Git repository so that it will continuously check if there is a new uh, revisions, new definition, if you have updated the versions, if you have added new examples, or you can just simply upload your uh, definition for a quick uh, test drive. So I can upload my definition right here. And once it is uploaded, Microx uh, has automatically discovered this new API definition and has automatically published new live endpoints for us. So let's check the, the details. We, we are retrieving the different uh, global informations about our API with the contracts and we are retrieving in the, the different uh, operation. And one important thing to notice is that we've got the different examples right here Laurent and Joan, that will be used as basis for mocking, for producing new events. You can see that because it has been discovered automatically, Microx has also created a new Kafka endpoint for that. So it takes care of everything. It reuses some Kubernetes operators to initialize the infrastructure and to create your your messaging infrastructure for you, okay? It can also be plugged on existing ones, but it takes care of everything. It has detected that um, her API had a, a Kafka binding, okay? And it is applying the default frequency, that is 10 seconds. So it means that each and every 10 seconds, it will publish new messages. And these new messages will be published on this topic specific to this operation, a topic that is managed, that is fully managed by Microx. So now just imagine I want, I am a consumer and I want to try out this API, even if it, if it has not yet been developed, I can just connect to the Kafka broker, here's the, the host name of the Kafka broker, and then connect to the topic that Microx has uh, created and that is managing for us. So just connect. And now each and every 10 seconds, I will uh, retrieve new events that are automatically published by Microx. And because I've used some, uh, some kind of templating, each and every events will hold some uh, dynamic contents, for example, some, uh, um, oops, 10 seconds, so new events here. So it's got a uh, unique identifiers, a uh, unique uh, publication date, and so on and so forth. So really easy. You can start using the API even if it has not yet been developed. So uh, quick demo may be frustrating. Uh, we only scrape the surface. We've got plenty of resources to help you understand and play with these different features. So uh, do not hesitate uh, reading these different blog posts, uh, especially last week we've published a blog post on uh, how to integrate a continuous testing for 
uh, both open API and async API together within the same pipeline. So please check out our blog and also the, um, the introduction blog on the async API one. And uh, do not hesitate to join the community. Uh, we've got a, a Zulip chat just for that. Some final words on Microx uh, benefits before before feeling, leaving you. Um, thanks to the to the mocking and the testing features, uh, you'll see that you'll be able to to gather feedback earlier and ensure the compliance of your event driven API on top of Kafka. So really fast, you may have consumers starting to play around with your API and send feedback. You will be able to do that continuously as Microx integrates with your sources of truth in Git to keep your mocks always up to date. The test can be then triggered by your pipeline for continuous validation. You see that Microx seeks to ease the collaboration. It is able to reuse new standards or existing assets like a Sync API, Open API, Postman collections. And moreover, it it offers a, a consistent approach, whatever the types of API, and thus it can be used for a very pragmatic governance of all your API-related assets. It's easy to deploy, it's easy to scale, and it runs everywhere uh, Kubernetes is running. So it's a huge advantage when running in uh, constrained environments with uh, disconnected clusters, for example. So uh, time is running. Thank you very much for your time today. Hope it has served as a, as a teaser and it will make you consider a sync API in Microx when dealing with event-driven API. Uh, let you in good heads with keen sessions that will certainly give a great insight on how API specification are embracing diversity and on uh, a sync API enhancement uh, announcement. So. Definitely uh, exciting times are coming for Event Driven API. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Laurent. Uh, we have even time for one or two questions. Uh, I will ask the first question. Uh, Macrox is an open source tool. You created it. Uh, what kind of people, what kind of skills are you looking for to help you? <laughs> hey, basically, I. I we need many skills. We need, uh, uh, of course, uh, developers uh, because uh, we have uh, many ideas and many uh, topics to tackle on the roadmap. So we need also uh, uh, some technical writers that may help to enrich the, the set of uh, demonstrations we have. We may also need uh, designers. That's not, uh, we, we are lacking very good web designers uh it's kind of hard so definitely everyone is very welcome to to contribute okay thank you so everyone listening to this in the uh, in this session uh you know now now you know laurent you know macrox you know the website uh, address and the github repo you will find it very easily and uh, give a hand to Laurent because uh mocking is uh, definitely a must-have when you create APIs, whether, whether they are async APIs or uh, more synchronous APIs. Thank you very much, Laurent.